Hang on, I gotta get away from the water tank real quick. Uh-oh, Donnie. <laughs> okay, uh, I won't bother you, you don't bother me. That's Donnie the bull. Step away from Donnie, <laughs> just in case. Contact. Hey guys, welcome back to another beautiful day here on the Stony Ridge Farm. Look up, it's cloudy today. That means something. Today's video we're going to talk about some of the struggles that come with having a solar well system. And that's what we've got here on the farm. It's a solar well system from Lorentz Solar. Uh, we got cows up here at the water tank. So let's go up here and I'll show you what's going on. And I'll show you my solution to this problem. It's better to store water than it is to store power. Hey guys, good morning. Aren't you pretty? <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to the Stony Ridge Farm Channel. If this is your first time, please hit that like button, subscribe. I'd love to have you back here on the farm with me. This is a 150-acre first-generation regenerative farm here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. And these are my pastures. These are my cows. I've got about 55 cows right now. And uh, I'm having a lot of success with it, really a lot of success. There'll be links to other videos about the farm here at the end of this. Today, what I want to talk about is the water system on the farm. There's a lot of curiosity out there about the water system too. Um, so let's just get right in the meat and potatoes here. This is called a Mirafount 3390. It says it right there on the top. Uh, these little balls float inside this water tank right here. And you'll notice they're not all the way tight in here. Well, this water tank is starting to fill up right now, but on cloudy days or in the dark when we run a solar well system, and that's what we have here, I guess the way you need to think about it is we are at the highest point in this pasture. There are water tanks at lower points in the pasture and there's water under the ground. So we have inch and a quarter poly pipe under the ground. Over the entire farm, it's about 400 gallons of water underground. However, that water has to fall through those pipes to the tanks that are down in the bottom land over here. This one is way up high. So it runs out first, get it? It's kind of like, I don't know, pouring out a glass of milk. The milk in the top of the glass goes out first. This is the top of the glass of the farm. Now, we get days like this where it's really cloudy. I've got the cows up here. They weren't thirsty. Now they see me up here. They're all about it. Hang on, I gotta get away from the water tank real quick. Uh-oh, Donnie. <laughs> hey, I, I won't bother you. You don't bother me. That's Donnie the bull. Um, <laughs> it's funny. These creatures just follow you. They, that's what they do. Um, so anyhow, we're at the top of the pasture. When the sun goes down, the well don't pump. If the cows were in a lower pasture, the water would fall from the pipes into those tanks. And this Mirafount 3390 can service up to 150 beef cows, so it's not too small, but the tank itself only holds about 40 gallons. So it's constantly recovering, filling up, recovering, filling up, recovering, filling up on the top of this hill. Down in the bottoms, it stays full all the time. So. When you have our cows out here in the hot, hot summer months, they drink a lot more water. And what happens is the cows will hang out in the shady spots in the daytime. And then in the evening time, when the sun's going down, they'll all come and they'll mob drink, which I've got them trained to do evidently for this video. So they mob drink. They come in here and they push around and they shove and they drink up all the water that's in that tank just like that. Okay, and some don't get as much water as I think they should. Now, are they fine? Yeah, they're, they're totally fine. But I would like them to have full access to water all the time. We're gonna ride over to the solar well now, and I'm gonna show you guys this setup. It's from Lorentz Solar, and what we've decided is that it's better to store water than it is to store power. It's cheaper to store water. This is, this is sweetie. Hey, sweetie. How you doing, girl? I haven't seen you in a while. 
<laughs> what a good cow. Um, I love my animals. I really, really care for my animals. Um, anyhow, you can see we got the shoving match right now. This is what happens. Tickle, tickle. <laughs> what was that? Um, this is Donnie. He's our bull, and Donnie's got his head buried up in this thing. This is not pumping right now, okay? If it were pumping, those balls would be floating all the way to the top. And the cool thing about having a mirror fount waterer like this is you can look out into your pastures and you always know whether your water tank is full. I'm gonna step away from Donnie, <laughs> just in case. Um, so you guys can see, they're all pushing, shoving. They're gonna mob drink here for a minute. They follow me through the farm because they think we're gonna move to a new section of pasture and we are gonna do that in just a minute. But right now, they're all pushing and shoving and that's just what's gonna happen for the next half hour or so. This thing is slowly filling up, but it's not pumping at its full capacity, and the reason is because of those clouds. We have four days of cloudy weather. We got a problem. Each one of these cows is gonna drink in the hot, hot summertime upwards of 25 to 30 gallons of water per day. Let me show you the solution. flies on the farm guys holy cow did you see how few flies were on those cows that's a tenth of what it was a week ago so we kind of got it under control now which is awesome the pasture sanitation chickens are working let's get through this gate and uh, we'll run up here the well is on the other side all the way up here so pipe is ran all the way this whole entire distance that we're gonna travel Taking some of the fertilizer out of the daggone pasture. That ain't right. <laughs> Every gate has a lock on it here on the Stony Ridge farm. I don't use uh, grandpa's old lock with a, a key. I use combination locks. I know I'll be coming in and out of here a little bit today, so I'm going to leave that one unlocked. But overnight, Every gate stays locked. You never know when some knucklehead might just show up and let your animals out. Holy cow. My worst nightmare on this farm is to hear screeching tires and one of my cows out in the road and a minivan full of kids or something hits it. That would be so horrible. Let's get on over here to the well. baby chick update uh, so the garden is starting to produce and we've got our baby chicks here and all my food scraps go to my chickens and I've got some not so good <laughs> looking blueberries and uh, strawberries here but chickens will chow down on this just dump them right in there and they don't care they, they will eat all that rotten stuff and I got some salsa here that just might be questionable just didn't want to eat it <laughs> there we go a little salsa fresca for the chickens here you go guys there you go <laughs> so we got mama hen in here that hatched out a bunch of babies and if you guys didn't see the video i'll post a link to it at the end of this uh, I lost a baby chick. I set a baby chick from the outside of this coop into that coop and there was a snake right at the door and I set it down and I heard and, and the, oh, it was so bad. There's a, uh, there'll be a link to that video at the end of this. But you can see, this is where all the garden scraps go. So, you know, all this makes a big difference, guys. Everything is set up for a reason. The garden is close to the chicken coop so I can throw food scraps over to the chickens. Our baby chicks are out now and they're out exploring <laughs> right here. So they're looking good. Everybody's doing well. Really happy with that. The honeybees are close to the garden so that they pollinate our garden. And we got a little baby chick over here. Hey guy, what you doing there little guy? You get better get back. <laughs> no. I get sidetracked. Oh, let's get that weed. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> uh, 
let's mow that. Uh, get sidetracked, guys. It's pretty funny. We're going to head on up to the well now. Just need to stop and drop off all them goodies to the chickens. They get all kinds of cool snacks. Hit it! We got a different kind of water tank here. I'm gonna show you real quick. And it's looking pretty dingy and pretty cloudy right now. And this also tells me my well is not pumping currently in this cloudy condition. Um, so here's what we got. This tank will be full here with very clean water very, very shortly. There's a goldfish in there, right down there. And that goldfish kind of maintains the clarity of this. I'm also gonna put some snails in these, uh, like creek snails, to let the snails get in and help clean everything up too. So. Um, to keep your water tanks clean like this, um, you don't, I don't have that ball floating on the top. In other words, this is 400 gallons of water versus 40 gallons of water. It's a lot more water in this tank, um, but it's open to the air. So I keep a goldfish in there to keep the mosquito larva out of it. And uh, as soon as the cows drink, it's pumping fresh, fresh, fresh water. Uh, up here is the solar well, and uh, we'll just walk up here and show you. This is all, again, from Lorentz Solar, and I have a video coming out soon. I'm installing a remote monitor system on this so that I can just look on my phone at any point in time and know whether my well is pumping or not. That's something that's really, really cool. So these solar panels, uh, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight solar panels and a control box. That control box has a red light on it currently. There's a sensor over here on the other side of the control box that reads how much light is being produced. And in other words, if you can't run low voltage. If you run too low of a voltage, you can damage your pump. So that sensor tells the pump when it's okay to engage, when these solar panels are producing enough voltage. And currently under these cloudy conditions, and it might even rain here in a minute, um, it's not pumping. Now, as the sun peeks through, you can see it coming through the clouds a little bit right here. The green light will come on and it'll start pumping. It's pretty cool. Uh, it doesn't take very much pumping for that thing to fill every water tank on the farm. However, we've got a secondary solution I'm going to show you guys. It's cheaper to store water than it is to store power. I could put a battery bank up here and let it charge and discharge and use it all the time and we could pump all night long or when I get in a pinch, like a cloudy day like this or a super cloudy week, here's what I do. So many cool pieces of content surrounding this water system, guys. This is our cistern. This is a thousand gallon water cistern. I'm going to open it up and show you real quick. Um, the well is right there. It pumps to the cistern. Open this critter up. Okay. I think this is an ingenious setup right here. So here's my water. It is clear all the way to the bottom down there. Now is it cold? Yeah, it's probably 55 degrees, 60 degrees, something like that. Um, we have a plug in here, yes. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this back down. Um, this was from Northern Tool and Equipment, and this isn't buried all the way underwater or underground. Why is it not buried? I wanted to put this tank in. It's a thousand gallon tank, but it's not a variable tank. So I came in around it. I'll post a link to that video, and I put sand down in the bottom, and I set this in, and then I backfilled around it with not sand, but good field dirt, not rocky field dirt. It is buried deeper than the frost line here in North Carolina where I live. So what that means is I don't have to worry about this tank freezing and I always have a backup water tank. I have underneath this bucket, 
a valve and I created this whole system right here. So this is a valve control. Um, down in here is a shutoff valve. And again, if you wanna see the entire video, I'll post a link to it. But this is something I made out of an old bike rack. Um, and what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna turn this valve one way or the other. Oh, hang on. I need both hands for this one. There we go. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna leave that in there. It's okay, won't hurt a daggone thing in the world. Right now, we got water flow. So this 1,000 gallon storage tank right here serves as a backup, okay? So when the power goes down like this, it'd be like when the grid goes down. When it's cloudy for a couple days or the cows need their water tank filled, I can come up here and drain this. It's a thousand gallons. Now I gotta keep an eye on it. And the goal with this entire system is not to have a thousand gallons of backup water. It's to always have a thousand gallons in this thing so that overnight the cows will always have water. Eventually I'll have a sensor that comes from the well controller all the way over here and it sits in the tank. It's a float sensor. It sticks up until it gets down to where it falls over. And when it falls over, that lets the pump know, fill this tank up. So in order to make this work perfectly, the goal was to come from that pump to this tank, which is the highest point on the farm, and then let the water fall via gravity all over the farm. It's really neat. All you'd have to do, um, so let's talk about wells and water. That well is 360 feet deep, but the static water level in that well is at 22 feet. In other words, where the water sits in the pipe in that well is only 22 feet. So the well pump really won't have to work much at all. It only has to push up that 22 feet and the rest of it falls to the rest of the farm therefore saving my well. I could have drilled that well anywhere on the farm. I could have put it way down in the bottom land, way down there, no problem. Might have, might have even been a more productive well. However, I am saving my pump by putting my well in the high spot on the farm right here and also saving my pump by just pumping to here and letting it fall to the cows. So right now, all the water tanks that are below this, which is every water tank on the farm, they're all filling up right now. And this thousand gallons, we can just open that up real quick again. And you'll probably see that the water level has dropped. Um, with that inch and a quarter poly, we can really put out some water. Yeah, so the water has already dropped about that far. I've got to keep a close eye on this. I have to come back and check it in about 20 minutes and make sure I don't run it completely dry. And then when the sun pops back out, all I got to do is come back up here, make sure it gets filled back up and it's ready to rock and roll. Again, there'll be a future video on installing a monitor system for this wellhead so you guys can see how I can monitor it right from my phone. It shoots a signal up to a... Um, cell tower and then it shoots it right back to me really really cool water setup guys if you have any questions there will be links to three different videos at the end of this some water tank install videos maybe this install video and maybe the Lorentz solar install video if you're considering look at that the sun just popped out if you're considering a solar well I've had awesome awesome luck i say luck uh, serviceability out of the laurent solar system they're widely regarded all around the world as the best of the best uh, really cool setup guys thanks so much if you have questions or any suggestions please let me know down there please post them down in the comments this is just one of the struggles of having a solar well system and not having a battery backup system for it i could spend five thousand dollars on a battery backup system or I could just store water right here. And this tank, I think, ran about a thousand bucks back in the day when I got it. Um, maybe less than that. Thousand gallons of water or five thousand dollars worth of battery that's gonna have to be replaced year in and year out. I think this is a better idea. What do y'all think? Hit that like button. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge. I gotta go get busy. We're gonna move them cows to some fresh grass. Take care. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, this is my pet rock, Bobby. Say hey, Bobby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is why we call it the Stony Ridge, man. I've been rolling rocks out for years. Good job, Bobby. Uh, taking some of the fertilizer out of the daggone pasture. That ain't right. <laughs> All right.